Okay, so it is the 4th of July. So, I know I've got to show you this clip. I put this together a couple years ago. People, like, you can't fix stupid, okay? And there are some stupid things that people do on the 4th of July. So, yes. So, enjoy this clip. Here we go. You're not about to like that right now, are you? Now this is just stupid. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> All right. Smart. 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 Smartest thing in the world. You might want to let that go. <laughs> Yo, I thought you were lighting your. I thought you were lighting your shirt. Oh my god! episode of stupid things that kids do. <laughs> so far it's not off to a good start. Not yet, but... Why? Yeah, that's not Yeah, it looks all right. <laughs> 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 Don't be stupid this <laughs> be in uh, Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3 tonight, all right? We've been doing this series on what we've been freed from and what we've been freed for. So tonight what we're going to look at, um, I guess as I think about what we're going to learn tonight is I've had a lot of conversations with people who come in and they want counseling. And as I listen to their story and they unpack their story, they're living like, 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 
their mindset is like Jesus didn't even do anything for them. Like, like what Jesus did for them um, is not making any difference in their life. And I think part of that is because they have gotten this wrong idea on what Jesus did. And so tonight we're going to get some clarification as we look at this other part of what it means to be have your freedom in Christ and what we're freed from. So we're going to start in verse 10 of Galatians chapter 3. And okay, by the way, so the book of Galatians is all about some, um, some believers that were in this church that Paul helped start. In fact, we just finished going through the book of Galatians in the men's Bible study. Okay, took us almost a year probably to go through it, right? It took, took a long time to go through it. But in the whole book of Galatians, it's, it's, uh, Paul is writing a letter to the Galatians because he was there for a couple years helping this church get started, and then he had to leave to go do something else. And he wasn't gone even three weeks before the Judaizers stepped in and um, started to convince them that it, Jesus wasn't enough. It wasn't Jesus, it was Jesus plus. And so Paul wrote them a letter to try to go, hey, hey guys, are you kidding me? In fact, at one point he says, who has bewitched you? What is going on here? And so by the time we get here, to Galatians chapter 3, listen to what he says. He says, But those who depend on the law to make them right with God are under his curse. Um, we're in Galatians chapter 3, and we start in verse 10. For the scriptures say, Cursed is everyone who does not observe and obey all the commandments that are written in God's book of the law. Verse 11, so it is clear that no one can be made right with God by trying to keep the law. For the scriptures say, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. And then in verse 12, it says this, this is the way of faith it is very different from the way of law, which says it is through obeying the law that a person has life. And then we get to verse 13. Here's the crux, right here. Verse 13. <clears throat> but Christ has rescued us from the curse pronounced by the law. When he was hung on the cross, he took upon himself the curse for our wrongdoing. For it is written in the scriptures, cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. Okay, so before we jump into this, it's important that we understand that we understand um, some things about the law. Okay? Some things about the law. Okay? Um, in the Old Testament, the word law is the word Torah. Torah. T-O-R-A-H. Torah. Okay? In the New Testament, um, it's the word uh, namas. Okay, the law in the Greek is namas. In the Hebrew, it's Torah. Okay? So basically, the Torah refers to what human beings are commanded to do. Okay? Um, but there's also a lot about how human beings are supposed to live their life. Okay? That's what the Torah was for, was to do that. That's why there's, there's some sects of, of, of Christianity that teaches that we should still be obeying the Torah uh, because it teaches us how to live, 
Okay? In fact, I went on um, a couple different um, YouTube sites um, to see what they would say, what they say about this. Okay? We're going to get to that in a second. I thought this was interesting. But anyway, um, so Paul was an expert in the Torah. Okay? He was an expert, and he said some very interesting things about the law. He said that it was only for the Jewish people. Okay? He said that it showed how sinful we were. You want to know what the purpose of the law was? It showed us how sinful we were. Okay? Without the law, like, we wouldn't know. Like, in, Paul, in fact, Paul said that I wouldn't know that covenanting is wrong until I read the Torah, the law that said it was, it's wrong. Okay? Um, but Paul also said that the law was good, that it was good. All right? And he said that no, there's no one that could obey it all. No one could obey all of it except Jesus. When Jesus came, okay? And it was never meant to be a way of salvation. Paul makes that very clear. The Torah, the law, was never meant to be a way of salvation. Okay? In fact, in Galatians chapter 3, Paul writes, okay, he said that Jesus rescued us from the curse pronounced by the law. So here's this word, curse. Curse. Um, so in other words, he's saying, okay, so, so this curse that he's talking about um, of the law has two parts to it. Okay, two parts to this curse. Okay, here's the first part is that we're born into the curse because of sin. Like we're born into it. Like from birth, we experience this curse because of sin. Like all you have to do is read Romans chapter 6 and Romans chapter 7, and Paul talks all about this thing that, that what sin did, sin brought death. It's part of who we are at birth, right? Okay, and then we're born, we're born as a slave to sin, we're born spiritually dead, okay? And if we remain in that state, our destination is an eternity without God in hell. Okay, there aren't a lot of preachers that like to talk about hell nowadays. Jesus talked about hell, right? It's a real place. All right? Um, the second part of the curse, though, is this. It is this mistaken idea that people can earn their salvation without God's grace. And it, it upholds the law as the primary catalyst, okay? That's what was going on. Like, okay, so when I went on YouTube this week to look at some of these YouTube sites, right? Um that uh, were all about the Torah and why we should be obeying the Torah, right? These are people that still pro profess Jesus, by the way. Okay, now listen. On many of the sites, uh, a person would say, like over and over and over again, that the Torah was never meant as a way of salvation, okay? They, they're saying, we, uh, you need to understand, it was never meant as a way of salvation, okay? Here's the problem. Here's the problem. The problem is, that's not how it was perceived. That's not how they looked at the law. In fact, Paul said in Galatians, where we're at right now, he said that the Judaizers taught that by obeying the law, you were made right with God. In fact, they would say Jesus wasn't enough. You have to get circumcised and obey parts of the law in order to you be fully right with God. So, so let me ask, I'm just going to throw out a question here okay, for you. Okay, so in all the books that you've read, in all the stories you've heard, in all the movies you have watched, um, was a curse ever a good thing? 
Never. Like you never, never. Like a curse. No, 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 no. It was never a good thing. And so Paul is using this word curse to get our attention. He wants to get our attention. Okay? He wants to know, us to know how toxic and damaging the law could be if you view it the wrong way. Okay? In, in fact, Jesus said, he, Jesus didn't say that the law was not good. He said he came to fulfill the law. Right? So, it, it's, so, so I thought about, okay, so what, what is this a picture of? What, what's Paul saying? Like, how can I... How can I give you a, an, an accurate picture, like a, 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 word, a, a picture on what he's talking about when he's saying that the law is a curse? It doesn't do what you say it was. I thought, okay, well, what about, what about products that you would buy that said that they do one thing and they don't? So I did some research, okay? So I did some research on some products that actually said that they'll do something and then they're not. There's a lot of them out there, by the way. But just a couple. Okay, here's just a couple. Okay, here's one. This is the Sensa Weight Loss product. Okay, I don't know if you guys have ever used any of this, but this was something supposedly that you would sprinkle on food, okay, and it enhanced the smell and the taste and it would make users feel full and eat less. Okay? It was basically salt. Anyway, the uh, Federal Trade Commission okay, ruled that the claim misled customers and made unfounded weight loss claims. The organization was forced to pay $26.5 million in a set settlement. Oops. Okay, how about this next one? Maybe you've even used this next one. Five-hour energy? Five-hour energy, okay. Um, they allege that its energy drink shots were more effective than coffee and that doctors recommended it. Those claims were found to be deceptive and the makers of five-hour energy were ordered to pay $4.3 million in penalties and fees. Whoops. How about this one? Luminosity apps, okay. I've played some of these apps. Okay, now listen, this is crazy. In its ad, Lumos Labs claims its apps, which offer users access to games and brave training, brain training exercises, that it would help prevent Alzheimer's disease and help students perform better in school, though it had no proof. The company was fined $2 million. Actually, they were fined $50 million, but they couldn't afford it, so they cut it to $2 million. Whoops. Okay, how about this next one? We all know this next one. Frosted mini wheats, right? Yeah. Um, they claimed, now listen, this is crazy. They claimed that it improved children's attentiveness by 20%. <laughs> yeah, maybe for like uh, 30 seconds. <laughs> Get all that sugar in there. They're all hyped up, right? But attentiveness did not increase as much as promised in the vast majority of children who ate the cereal. Really? So they agreed to pay $4 million and stop the ads. Okay? How, okay, these next two are hilarious. Okay, now listen. Okay, the, the, okay, here's the next one. New Balance Shoes. Anybody ever buy any New Balance Shoes? Okay, listen to this. Okay, here it is. New Balance Toning Shoes. Okay, listen to this. The athletic shoemaker said its toning shoe could help wearers burn calories, though the shoes were never proven to be any better at burning calories than any other type of shoe. <laughs> yeah. They had to settle a class action suit against over those claims for $2.3 million. And then Skechers didn't learn the lesson from New Balance. So they came out with a shoe too. Skechers Shape Ups said in advertisements that its Shape Up shoes would help wearers lose weight and tone their muscles. 
Those claims were deemed deceptive and Skechard settled for $50 million. They promised something they could never deliver. That's the law. That's what people thought about the law. Okay? Something that it could never deliver. So Paul makes it very clear that we have been freed from the curse of the law. We've been freed from the curse of the law. Why is it so important that you know that? Why is it so important that you know that Jesus took on that curse for you? Because many of us here, listen to this, we live our lives like we're still under the curse. We live our lives like we're still under that curse. God wanted to free us from that curse so we could live our lives as he intended and accomplish our purpose in this generation. He ended that curse so we could live our lives and fulfill the purpose that he has in our generation. And that's the thing that is just killing me with people that are calling themselves Christ followers. When Jesus came here and he put that curse on himself, he took all of it, every bit of the curse, the death that was ours, he took it on, all of it. Throughout this series, we've been discovering, right, what we've been freed from and what we've been freed for. In this case, in this letter that he's writing to the Galatians, to a, um, he's helping them to understand. You Stop listening to the Judaizers. It's Jesus only. Stop living like you're still under the curse. Why would you be free? Why, why would you want to be free of a curse and then go right back to where you got the curse and get it again? Ridiculous. Why would you want to do that? So then Paul writes this letter to a really big church in Corinth and presses in on something that God gave us because we're no longer under the curse of the law. Listen to this. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, starting in verse 18. He says, And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them, and he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. Three times Paul uses this word, reconciling or reconciliation. You know what that is? That is this picture, like it's this Greek type picture of ma making a change, creating a change, offering a change. Sometimes it's used in a financial type of um, term to make an exchange where you're exchanging money for something new. What kind of change are we offering people when we talk to them about Jesus? Think about the change that happened in your life. Change of destiny. Change of eternity. Change of heart. Change of perspective on life. Change of hope. 
change in how we view ourselves, change in how we view others, change in our relationship with God. We were far away from God. We were separated from God. We were his enemy. Now we have been reconciled, changed. There's been an exchange that has happened. Now we can be connected, adopted, and friends. He, Jesus took on that curse like he took it. He broke that curse so that we could be a change agent. And then he uses the words Christ ambassadors. Christ's ambassadors. That is a huge word. Ambassadors. Like have you ever seen in a movie or something where somebody is an ambassador for another country? Like in this country, we have ambassadors from other countries. And what do they do? They represent the country in our country. Right? Okay, well, that word like, like the King James says... You in Christ's stead. You in Christ's stead. Literally, it means, now listen to this, you instead of Christ. You instead of Christ. Okay? Have you ever you heard the term Jesus with skin on? Have you ever heard that term before? Like somebody say, you know what? We want to be Jesus with skin on. Okay? We want to be Jesus with skin on. Do you know what that means? That, that means Jesus has chosen us to represent him. He's not going to come here to represent himself. Not until he comes back. Until then, guess who plan A is? We are. There's no plan B. We are. We're Jesus with skin on to a lost world. That's why we talk about telling others about Jesus. That's why we talk about discipling other people. That's why we talk about living a sent life. Like living like you've been sent. Right? So I have been freed from the curse of the law for reconciliation. For bringing people back to God. That's why I have been freed of the curse. I mean, it's killing me about all of these Christ followers that think, oh, yes, I put my faith in Jesus, and I love Jesus, and I go to church, and all of that stuff, but I'm just going to sit here. I'm going to sit here and just keep taking it all in. Take it all in. Take it all in. Get fatter and fatter and fatter and fatter and fatter. And Jesus is going, you are missing the point on why I broke that curse. I broke the curse so that you could help other people turn back to God. That's why. That's why you turn back to God because somebody told you about Jesus. Right? That's what Paul's trying to get us to understand. If you know Jesus as your Savior... Now listen, and you have chosen to follow him. You are now Jesus with skin on. That's you. To everyone that you come in contact with. Everyone. Because it says the moment you put your faith in Christ, his spirit comes to reside on the inside of you. Right? Right? And in our country right now, listen to this. Oh my gosh. In our country right now, people are exhausted with all that has taken place over the last two years. We have been living in such a comfort culture for almost 45 years. I was
was alive during the 60s and 70s. I know what the country was like then. It was a freaking mess. And now we're starting to experience some turmoil here. But we've had 45 years of this comfort culture that has taken place. And now we're experiencing some really, really crazy things, right? And people are tired of the struggle to be heard and to feel hope and to experience relief. They need to see the reality of Jesus in and through us. Maybe that's you tonight. Maybe you're tired. You're exhausted from all of it. How can you restore your weary soul in the middle of uncertainty in our world? So in two weeks, I'm going to start a new series called Resilient. Resilient. Because see, if we're going to live a sent life, if we're going to live out what we have been freed for, we will need to grow our resilience. Here's my challenge for you this week. Okay? As you interact with people around you, I want you to ask yourself a couple questions. One is, am I being Jesus with skin on right now? Am I being Jesus with skin on? Second one is, how can I represent Jesus and his kingdom right now? How could I do that right now? In a second here, we're going to do communion together, okay? For those of you that are watching on um, Facebook Live, thanks for joining us tonight. Um, happy Fourth of July. Uh, we continue to pray for you guys. I pray for our uh, Facebook family um, all the time. And uh, I'm hoping, my, my, my prayer for you is that you, you embrace this truth. That you've been freed from that curse of the law. That God's grace has swept over you in order for you to be Jesus with skin on to those around you. All right? Um, so we'll see you next week. Hey, if you guys that are watching, um, if you would pray about something, um, maybe you've joined us before on Facebook Live, but you've never really thought about giving towards our ministry. Um, summers are rough for us, and um, we do a lot of ministry. We don't stop. In fact, we ramp up our ministries in the summer. So if you would consider um, giving towards TNC, that'd be great. There's three different ways for you to do that. You can do that on Tithely, or you can do that on our website, or you can just send it through the mail. So we love you guys. You guys have a great fourth. Stay safe. See you next week.